Hi guys, this is Tech Howdy. I welcome you to another video tutorial on creating this featured image slider with ASP.NET Core and Angular. In, this in the last video tutorial, we finished coding the preview functionality. I mean, we added the code. We have not yet uh, tested the code and I believe it's not going to work because we have many things that we need to fix before we run the application. So if you look at the finish project, when we click on the edit button, we see this model pop up with all the details of the row which the button resides. So let's go ahead and add the code for this functionality. So if you look at the edit button, which is being dynamically generated on each row, requires us to have this edit gallery method, which fires off on the on-click event. And the edit gallery method will obviously load the model for the edit gallery. So let's go ahead and first add the code for edit gallery model as we did for our preview model. So let's go ahead and add that code. So here just below the preview slider, I'm going to add the code for model that is required to edit the gallery by ID. I have set the ID of the model to edit gallery model by ID. Guys, if you're not familiar with model, it's very important that you look up the documentation on getbootstrap.com so if you had to go and check on yourself how you are going to create a carousel for example you will see that once you have installed bootstrap uh, library you just have to place this code in your html document and then you can see this slider so what we are doing here in this project is when we create any carousel or when we create any model, we are using Bootstrap that's helping us to build things fast. So if you look at this code for the edit for the preview gallery, the carousel itself, it's the same code that I'm getting from here. But all I'm doing is instead of me writing this code on an HTML document, I am using jQuery and I'm creating each line of this code using jQuery. I'm just appending each line. So if you look at this code and you look at my code, it's the same code. All I'm doing is I'm appending this each line of code so that I can create it dynamically because when the image is available, then only we need the preview. So similarly, for the edit model gallery, I go to Bootstrap and I find the code for models and then I use it in my project. I modify the title and other required attributes that I need and I place them in the files. So that's all I'm doing. So if you need more information about these snippets or these components that we use, go to Bootstrap and understand the framework, how things are created because we cannot spend time on HTML learning Bootstrap and HTML. So now when we go back to our application, we can save this model that we just added. And now when we go back to our gallery.js, we will create this method that's going to load this model, which is edit gallery by ID. So just below the load model slider method, I'm going to create the edit gallery by ID method. So when the button is clicked, we will load a model but before we load the model we have to always clear the previous values so if you look at the finished project when i click this button i see that the featured and the active options are not checked off and i don't see any options from the previous gallery that was loaded so if i load this option here the second gallery the featured and the active options are checked off and i see details related to that gallery so every time we load a new gallery, we clear the details of the previous gallery, the data of the previous gallery. So that's what we are doing over here. We are initializing the values so that previous values are clicked. So we are changing the option of the checked boxes to false by targeting the IDs. Then we are following the similar process. We are getting the values of each uh, stable cell that is inside that specific row where the button was clicked. So if I click the first row, I get the details of these cells in which that row button is. So if I go to my code, I have created 
variable to store each value. So I get the value when the button is clicked, the entire row is passed, the entire row data is passed to the parameter of this method, and then I get all the data using the data attribute values, accessors that I have created. I just call them inside uh, the data method and then I can get the value. Next, I'm console.logging it so that I can see what values I receive when I click. Also, finally, I'm going to load the model by calling the model gallery's ID, the model's ID, and then I'm going to Inside the model, I'm going to dynamically generate the values for uh, each options that's inside the model. So if I go back and if I click, so I'm going to fill these values based on the values that I receive from the row. Once I've done that, if the button is uh, checked, then I'm setting it to true. And if it's not checked, then I'm setting it to false. So that's what I'm doing here and finally setting the username and the gallery type. That's all we are doing in this method. So if you want to get any values from the table cell in tabulator, you have to access it using a data attribute tag and give each data attribute tag a, a name like a identity. So which should be unique to each data attribute tab. They should be all lowercase as mentioned previously, and then you can access them using the data method dot data method <laughs> now this uh, method has been implemented now let's work on the delete gallery method so when the delete button is clicked once again let's look at the finished project and the delete button is click one more model pops up which is the confirmation model asking if the user wants to delete the gallery so let's go ahead and first add the model that is required to be loaded inside the CSHTML file. So guys, if you go back to our CSHTML, we already have a delete gallery model that we have used in when we wanted to delete our particular gallery. So when we go to the preview tab, we already have this functionality where we, when we click the model pops up. So it's the same model that we have on the button itself over here in tabulator. So we don't need to add a new model. We are going to use the same model. So what we'll do only we'll implement the method and we'll redirect the method call to this model itself and dynamically we will update the values. So if we go here and we go to uh, at the bottom of this uh, edit gallery where we had the edit gallery method, we will add our delete gallery method now. So our delete gallery method is not a very extensive method. You can see just a few lines of code. That's the trick. All we need to do is when the delete button is click past the object inside the parameter on and then we get the ID using the data uh, attribute. So also, when we edit a particular gallery, we need multiple data information. But when we are just editing, so as you see, when we are just deleting, we just need the ID. When we are previewing, we just need the ID. So we don't need other information because when we preview, we get the information from our Ajax call. And when we delete, all we need to do is pass the ID to the uh, database, the server so that we can delete that gallery with a particular ID. That's what we are doing over here. We are setting the confirmation. And do you want to delete the ID? So, and when the user clicks on the yes button, so it's the same method that's going to execute in the model itself. So we already have this confirmed delete gallery method implemented. So we don't have to implement it again. So it will go and delete the gallery with the ID. So it saves us time. Now, if you go back, one thing is very important. I did functionality, if you'll notice, it has a method that's 
uh, being called when the form is submitted. So when the edit gallery by uh, edit, mod edit gallery model by ID form, the form inside that model is submitted, we are calling the Ajax update gallery by ID method. So we need to create that method so that the data inside our preview action tab or the action tab, the data that we update here gets also updated in the server and our database. So let's go ahead and implement that method. So inside the gallery uh, .js, I have added this method called as Ajax update gallery by ID, which is the same method that will be called when the form is submitted. All the form data is passed to this method and then we get the ID from the gallery ID tag that we have here which is hidden. So we need to know the ID of which uh, gallery we are going to update. And then finally we call the uh, Ajax method. We supply some Ajax options and call the endpoint of our API which updates the gallery by ID and provide the ID. And when the method call is a success, we will hide the model, we will reset the trigger, we will load the gallery, which is once the gallery is updated, when we click save, then we will update this table over here so that the old values are refreshed. And after that, we will also make sure uh, that we call the view gallery method, which we have to yet code. So we haven't yet created the view gallery method. So let's go ahead and do that. The view gallery method is basically the method that will be called when the page loads for the first time. So when our gallery action tab loads for the first time, we need to have some data loaded, preloaded. So we don't have to click any button to go and load the galleries. So we will code this uh, method so that when the page loads, we'll have some galleries already preloaded for us. So that method will be called view gallery. So let's go ahead and add that method. So just at the end of uh, this form or this method here, Ajax update gallery by ID, I'm going to code the view gallery method. So this view gallery method is going to create the tabulator table, initialize or instantiate the tabulator table, and then display the data for us. So when the page loads, we can see the tabulator table being created. So inside the view gallery method, I'm calling the Ajax method, and I'm calling the get image gallery uh, method which returns the image gallery. So all the data that we received, we are then going to string if I convert that data into a JSON string, and then we will call the table dot set data. So if we have already created the table object over here for tabulator, and to set the data inside this table, we have to call the table.setData method. Once we call the table.setData method, then the uh, table will be generated. And we can see the data being loaded onto the table. Now, the only thing with tabulator is that the data that we need to load needs to be in JSON format. And that's why when we receive the data, we want to make sure we convert it into a JSON string, and then we pass it to our tabulator table. Now, finally, what we want to do is we want to also call this view gallery method when the document loads. So uh, we will go ahead and add this on our document.ready method. So once the document is ready. We also want to make sure we load the tabulated table. So when we switch the tabs, so let's say the document loads, 
even when we go to action tab we already have this table loaded for us also we have to call the view gallery method which will load the gallery data again after we delete any gallery so when we delete any gallery from our tabulated table let's say the gallery is deleted then we need to reload this table data so we will call this method again after the gallery is deleted now the next thing that we want to do before we go ahead and test all these methods that we have created we need to add reference to tabulator library so that when we go in onto the browser we don't receive or we see a message that tabulator functions are not recognized or undefined so let's go ahead and add these references so let's go to the index.cshtml page scroll right on top and here we have added some style sections tags for style so we will specify the tabulator css reference over here so only when this page is loaded these files will be loaded only when the tabulator table is requested then only the style sheet will be loaded if we add them to the section styles now also go at the bottom here and add the javascript reference for tabulator.js so just before the custom script i'm going to add the reference to tabulator min.js it's located or it's stored inside the lib folder i've created a folder called as tabulator set tabulator we have the js folder and then we have tabulator.min.js we can save this now and then we can go ahead and we can test to see if we have any errors if there are any errors we will fix them so let's go ahead and run our application so a gallery is now application is loaded i have run my application and we will check if everything is working as expected uh, so we have not yet completed coding the uh, filters so we will do that in the next video tutorial but we will check the action buttons if the functionality works if you don't have any gallery images or featured sliders created i recommend you for the testing purposes create few sliders make sure when you create you set this to home so that we can test the featured gallery uh, option so you need to have a gallery type don't forget this so going back to the actions tab we have two galleries if i click on the preview you notice I get the animal gallery preview if now I click on the fishes preview so the animal gallery preview is cleared and now I can see the fishes preview also uh, I've, when you are calling the load model slider I made a slight mistake here you should call this API call, which is the end which is the endpoint get image gallery by ID uh, so make sure you use that because that's the method we are using so it loads the gallery by its id now uh, this works so we have no problem the preview works let's check the edit for button edit button works as well uh, let's check for the fishes gallery yes it works delete button so delete button also works gallery id 3 and gallery id 4 okay now let's try to see if we can change the active and its featured option so if i click the featured and active save as you see once i save the gallery is loaded the view gallery method is called and it's loaded again it's fine so if i change this back and i save this it's again change to active not active and featured and i can make the other gallery featured but not active so that works as fine so the action buttons are working the gallery in tabulator is loaded all we need to do is set these filters so that we can search by these filters we can then clear these filters by clicking this button we can reload the galleries and uh, that should be it uh, for our tabulator we can save the changes as well
when we edit any gallery so guys this is it for this video tutorial uh, the next video tutorial will work on this as mentioned all the code will be available in devs or repo uh, it's a lot of code that we did for tabulator but once you are familiar with the process you can implement and integrate this in your own projects it's very uh, lightweight framework to load your data it has a lot of options like lazy loading you can lazy load data in your table and if you go to this example tab on tabulator.info you can see different types of examples and you can get their source code by just clicking on the button below each example there is a source code option and you can change the way you want your table to be so if you want a responsive layout you can use this so there's a lot of stuff you can do with tabulator you can if you want a vertical layout you can do this so there's a lot go through it play around with it how you want your table to uh, look and there are options to lazy load add graph lots of stuff so let me know give me your feedback in the comment section if you have uh, anything that you want to know and yes the code where we will be pushed into a dev op repo so let me push it so you you have access to it and once i push it you should have access to it in the dev op repos to download the code please like and subscribe our channel tech howdy so that we can bring more of these type of contents it motivates us to keep adding videos and we will keep on adding bunch of projects so for now goodbye and have a good day